To North Carolina we go. The third major championship of this season in golf, the 2024 United States Open. Our country's national championship this week at Pinehurst number two, where we find Keith Stewart, who joins us live right here on this Tuesday on the early line from the grounds there in the Tar Heel State. Keith, as always, we appreciate the time and thank you for being here on the early line. Guys, it's fantastic to be here for our national championship. It's already hot. The air is heavy down here, and we're not even to the weekend yet. So, Keith, anytime we talk about a golf event, especially a major championship, we must start at the top. Scotty Scheffler, a victory last week at the Memorial, where you were in Dublin, Ohio, his fifth win in his last eight events. A heater we have not seen in probably at least 22 or 23 years in PGA Tour history. So, Scotty Scheffler takes that mantle as the world's best golfer into the third major championship of this season. And the price, Keith, the price for the toughest test in golf, the United States Open, is a 3-1 to one number. How do you describe the expectation level for Scotty Scheffler this week at Pinehurst number 2? Uh, the expectations are, A, don't get arrested, and then, B, come home with the national championship. I mean, in his last five starts, he's got three wins and he's got two seconds. I mean, the, the guy's unbelievable. At this point, last week was at Memorial, the way Sunday played, only three guys shot under par. That was a preview for the U.S. Open, and he still won. Uh, he won with a triple bogey on Sunday. It's just it's uncanny at this point. We're getting back to the to the to these days of where we used to see Tiger at such short odds, and you felt like, oh boy, I have to bet Tiger, and he's two to one, or Scotty's now three to one. Uh, it's it's a really really difficult betting proposition, but I do have a plan for you. Ooh, that's a nice little teaser coming up for us. But before we get to that plan, what's the plan for these golfers trying to attack Pinehurst number two? Because we, as we understand the U.S. Open, it's not built to say, let's go 10, 15, 20 under par. It's a true test of right. golf. What are the expectations this week for the golf course itself here, Keith? Well, Pinehurst number two is one of those just classic designed golf course. There's no one signature hole. It's a test from start to finish. I mean, we have one water hazard on the whole property, and it doesn't even come into play. This is just sand and grass and dirt, and it is going to test these guys mentally and physically. And I'm going to start with the mental side. For the skills that I think you need this week, and this is why Scheffler is such a favorite, is that he is the best guy when it comes to cerebral golf. That's why he has such an advantage at Augusta National and why he has such an advantage here or a place like the players. The, these golf courses that really, really test your patience and your ability to just kind of fire at the center of the green and take scoring when it comes. These guys are so good, they can't help but act aggressively. And when they do act aggressively, you need somebody with great total driving. The only change in the golf course since 10 years ago for the 2014 U.S. Open here, they didn't add length. They didn't add any extra, extra new tee boxes. They planted more wire grass, which is, the, you know, the bingo card word of the week you're going to hear in coverage. And they put it more in these sandy barren areas to ensure that it becomes more of a penalty should you miss the fairway. The second thing is that about 60% of your approach shots are coming in from over 175 yards. Very similar to the test last week at Memorial. Very similar to the test at Valhalla, although that played soft. And this is already firm and fast on a Monday, and we expect a lot of high sun, high heat down here, and no rain. So this place is going to get really even more firm and fast. And the third thing is, is that everyone's going to notice these turtle back greens. They reject, they reject approach shots. And when that happens, you're going to have very, very tight lies and all sorts of bunker lies and sandy situations around these greens, you have got to be a master with the wedge. You've got to be a great around the green player in order to save par or even score on some of these par five from close range. Those are my three keys for this week. The last U.S. Open contested at Pinehurst number two back in 2014, as Keith said, Martin Keimer victorious, lapping the field by eight, mm. nine under par, but only two other guys we're under par for the entirety of all 72 holes. So, Keith, as we talk about world number one, Scotty Scheffler, you mentioned you had a plan. You gave us the plan of attack for the golf course this week and the track in North Carolina. What is the plan if you want to wager on Scotty Scheffler? Well, you can only go one of two routes. You know, I lived this life years ago when you used to bet on Tiger and he would come into a major and he was two to one. 
You can either go Tiger and you can go single shot or you can go a full card against him. But you can't have the best of both worlds. Now, last week we missed it. We should have probably taken Scotty at those short odds and just went with one bet on him as an outright. But you know what? You can't do that in a U.S. Open. Look what happened with the ladies a couple weeks ago and how everybody ejected on day one. A lot of luck is always involved in a U.S. Open. 15 of the last 19 U.S. Open men's winners have – that has been their first major championship, right? This is the number one player in the world on a heater. But you know what? A U.S. Open doesn't set up for that. He's going to get a bad break at some point this week, and then it's how can he deal with it. And that might be the difference with him winning or losing. And at such short odds and luck being a factor and the USGA running these crazy tournaments, I won't take that chance. I'm going to go with a couple other early leans. If we take a look here at some of those early leans, that could be maybe Tiger Woods at 350 to 1 to win this tournament here. <sighs> how does Tiger Woods set up at Pioneers number two? Because we always hear about it's going to be a lot of walking. What are we looking at for Tiger Woods this week? Well, Donnie, it, it, it's the best walking so far that we've had for Tiger, maybe since the Open Championship at St. Andrews. It's very flat here, and he can handle that. It's also going to be warm, which is good for his back and all his so sore bones and muscles and everything else that he has a challenge with. But the fact of the matter is in the last two and a half years, we've had a 47th, a missed cut, a 45th, a 60th, and a mixed cut. I, I don't even know that we can bet Tiger anymore in the make or miss cut market. We need to see that trend change, and I'm hopeful with the flat terrain and the warm weather that we're going to get something great out of Tiger this week. So, Keith, 40 seconds left. Tiger probably not in the early leans. Give us some other names to pay attention to this week of the U.S. Open. The only guy that's on a close heater to Scotty, and that is Morikawa. So we need a miracle down here in Pioneer's number two from him. He has a third, a ninth, a 16th, a fourth, a fourth, and a second. That was runner-up to Scotty last weekend. And the second guy, if you need some magic beans around these greens, I'm going with Cam Smith. He grew up on the sand belt down there in Australia, which is just like Pioneer's number two. Keith, mm. we appreciate the time. Enjoy the week in North Carolina. More on the early line next.